Hello everyone, my name is Boaz Minyohin and I'll be presenting the work on card guessing with limited memory that shows the power of adaptive adversaries in streams. This is a joint work with Monina O from Weizmann Institute. Card guessing is a game played by two players, a dealer and a guesser. The dealer begins the game with a deck that consists of n distinct cards. In each turn, the dealer draws a card from the deck and places it face down on the table. The guesser tries to guess which card was drawn. The card is then revealed and discarded, so it can no longer be drawn by the dealer. The guesser gets a point for every correctly guessed card. And the question we are interested in is how many cards were guessed correctly? And since the game is random by nature, we are interested in the expected number of correct guesses. A guesser with perfect memory can keep track of all cards that were drawn so far and all cards that still reside in the deck and simply guess a card that still resides in the deck. On the first turn, that guesser would be correct with probability 1 over n, on the second with probability 1 over n minus 1, when i cards are left with probability 1 over i, and when there is a single card left, that guesser would be correct with probability 1, since she knows exactly which card it is. By linearity of expectation, this results in the harmonic sum, which is roughly ln n. On the other hand, a memoryless guesser cannot do anything better than guess with probability 1 over n. Again, by linearity of expectation, that results in a single correct guess throughout the game. However, a memoryless guesser can get a single correct guess for certain by simply repeating the same guess over and over again. Since each card must be drawn at some point, that would mean the guesser can get this single correct guess for certain with probability 1. These two examples are taken from a textbook on algorithms by Kleinberg and Tardosh. What we are interested in is what can be done with m bits of memory when m is less than n. And our answer is that it depends much on the dealer. We consider three kinds of dealers. The first dealer we consider is a random shuffle dealer. That dealer shuffles the deck properly at the beginning of the game and then draws cards one by one. This is equivalent to drawing a random card in every turn from the set of remaining cards or to sample a permutation pi and at turn i draw the card pi i. The second dealer we consider is a static dealer. That dealer can be somewhat familiar with the guesser's strategy, so that dealer prearranges the deck in some specific order in order, to, in order to fail the guesser. This can be thought of as a mild adversarial ability. The third dealer we consider is an adaptive dealer. That dealer draws cards thoughtfully in an adversarial manner and in response to uh, how the guesser played so far. As for the guesser, she has n bits of memory that she uses for a card guessing function. And she updates these n bits using a state transition function. She may use randomness for both functions and we refer to this randomness in two ways. Some random bits should be available and last throughout the game, while others are used exactly once. We charge the guesser for long-lasting random bits, but we don't care about how many on-the-fly random bits are used. The card guessing function takes the m bits of memory, the long-lasting randomness, and possibly on-the-fly random bits, and produces a guess. As for the state transition function, 
Along the memory and random bits, the function also gets the current card in order to produce the next memory state. In this talk, I will cover four of our main results from our paper. There is a low memory guesser that scores very well against a random shuffle dealer, one that draws cards randomly. There is also a low memory guesser against any static dealer that fixed the deck in advance. These two guessers are optimal in the sense that no guesser can perform similarly with less memory. And we also show an adaptive dealer against which no guesser can do anything better than using her memory to keep cards in mind. In our first two possibility results, we will count explicitly all random bits used by our guessers, while for our last two impossibility results, they hold even if the guesser is allowed to have unlimited amount of randomness. Here are some simple techniques that a guesser may use with only n bits of memory. The guesser can pretend that there are only m cards in the deck and keep track of these m cards using her m bits of memory and play as if she has perfect memory of these m cards. As these cards must appear at some point, then she gets the first one with probability 1 over m, the second with 1 over m minus 1, and she gets about 1 m, correct guesses in expectation. We call this technique subset guessing. Another technique is called remembering the last cards. With only log n bits, the guesser can guess the last card with probability 1. The guesser initializes the memory, her, initialize her memory with the sum of all cards module n and subtract the value of each drawn card from the sum. When a single card left, the guesser knows exactly which card it is as it is written clearly in her memory. This technique generalizes well to k cards using k log n bits, giving the guesser a fair chance to guess the last m over log n cards, resulting in lan m over log n correct guesses in expectation. The two methods are actually compatible. When playing against a random shuffle dealer, the guesser can allocate half her memory for subset guessing and half for remembering the last cards, and if the guesser has square root of n bits of memory, then the last card from the subset is expected to appear before we remember the last cards. And with m equals square root of n, this is near optimal. But we can do better. This brings us to our first result. There is a deterministic guessing method using only m bits of memory that achieves half square root of m correct guesses in expectation when playing against a random shuffle dealer. In other words, with log square n bits of memory, one get very close to the optimum possible with perfect memory. And we do it using the simple idea of remembering the last card. The idea is to follow the cards that appeared in multiple subsets of n. For each subset, we maintain two accumulators. One is the sum of the values of the cards seen so far, and two is the number of cards from the subset we have seen so far. Since there are n cards, each of them requires only log n bits of memory, and in general, for a set uh, of size s, we need to log s. Whenever there is a subset with a single missing card, then we can detect that this is indeed the case, because we know how many cards appeared from this set, and we know which card it is, because it is explicitly written in the memory. Therefore, 
guessing this card is a reasonable guess in the sense that this card still resides in the deck and has a positive probability to be drawn. In particular, consider the subsets 1, 1 until 2, 1 until 4, 1 until 8, and so forth. And whenever there is a range from which a single card is missing, then we guess this card. This is our algorithm. This construction has a nice property which we will use, and is for every two subsets, 1 until w and 1 until w prime, such that w prime is bigger than w, then if some card is missing from 1 until w, then it is also the one missing from 1 until w prime, and there cannot be a different one. In terms of space, each subset of size w requires log w bits for the counter and log w bits for the sum. And since there are log n subsets, we get that tracking these ranges requires roughly log square n bits of memory. As per the performance, consider a random ordering of the deck represented by a random permutation. We call a subset useful if the last card from it that appears in the permutation is different from the last card from the following subset. If a range is useful, then we guess the last card correctly, as our guesser repeats guessing this last card. And we attribute this correct guess to this useful subset. So, essentially, the number of good guesses is simply the number of useful ranges. Consider the event that a subset 1 until w is useful, that is, that the last card from 1 until w is not the last card in the next range, 1 until 2w. The probability for that event is the probability that in the next range, 1 until 2w, the last card does not come from 1 until w. Now, since the permutations are sampled uniformly at random, each card from 1 until 2w has the same probability to be drawn last. Therefore, the probability for that event is exactly half. By linearity of expectation, we get that the expected number of useful subsets is exactly half log n. We can amplify this technique and getting closer to lan and correct guesses by having more subsets and make them denser. If the ratio between two successive subsets would be 1 plus gamma, then we would have log n of base 1 plus gamma such subsets, and the probability of each one being useful is gamma over 1 plus gamma. The expected number of useful subsets, and as a result, the expected number of correct guesses, goes to lan n as gamma goes to zero. A simple adversarial argument shows that for every deterministic guesser, there is always a bad deck arrangement on which that guesser managed to make at most a single correct guess, as guessing the last card correctly may be inevitable. This is also true for our guesser, and it's even very simple. All one have to do is put the card 1 at the bottom of the deck, and our guesser will continue guessing it over and over again, resulting in a single correct guess, which would be on the last card. So, it is clear that we must use randomness against static dealers. One thing we can do is to sample a random permutation pi, just randomize our subsets, so that we would track the subset pi1, pi2, pi1, pi2, pi3, pi4, and so on. The performance would hold as before, but we would require order n log n bits of long-lasting randomness, which is something we wish to avoid. So, in the paper, we show that it's enough to sample a pairwise independent permutation to randomize the subsets. 
the amplification is a bit trickier and requires higher wise independence as the analysis is fundamentally different but information wise it is the same guesser so with order log square n bits of memory and only two log n bits of long lasting randomness a randomized subset guesser can score quarter lan n correct guesses against any static dealer so we conclude that there is a randomized guessing method using only log square n bits of memory and log square n bits of long lasting randomness that obtains quarter lan n correct guesses in expectation when playing against any static adversary furthermore this can get amplified to lan n by uh, paying only a log factor of both memory and randomness but what happens if m is even smaller so what actually happens if m is small say much smaller than log square of n well in this case we can treat the domain as if it is of size 2 to the square root of m and simply ignore all other cards now m equals log square of 2 to the square root of m and we can run the previous guessers on smaller domain and in get square root of m correct guesses on expectation but maybe there is something better that we can do so the answer is no no guesser with m bits of memory can score better than order of square root of m when playing against a random shuffle dealer this is also true for a static dealer but we show it for a random dealer the idea is that a guesser is a machine that generates information and if this information is particularly good then we can utilize this information to encode ordered sets efficiently Proof by encoding is a general method to prove the success of a randomized process by showing that bad events allows us to compress random bits used. Since the probability of compressing and chopping off w bits is 2 to the minus w, we get a bound on the probability for too many bad events to happen. Some notable examples are Moser and Tardosh proof for the algorithmic lovash local lemma, the success rate of cuckoo hashing and oracle separation results in crypto. The main ingredient for proof by compression is an encoding scheme in the form of encode and decode functions for a random object from some domain. Back to our proof. We would like to show that it is impossible to get close to one and correct guesses, which is the optimum, with little o of log square n bits of memory. In other words, we want to show that our guessers are optimal and it is impossible to perform similarly with, less with significantly less memory. Let m be smaller than log square n and set beta to be a fraction. We claim that any guessing algorithm using n bits of memory can get at most that many correct guesses on expectation, where the expectation is taking over the random shuffle of the deck. For beta equals lan n over square root of m, this is 2 square root of m. So, as we said, we will use the guessing algorithm to encode an ordered set of size t, where t equals n to the 1 minus beta, and we will show that if there are too many correct guesses, then our encoding function produces descriptions of length of length shorter than the entropy of a random ordered set of size t. We will focus on bounding correct guesses in the last t terms. Let a random variable L be the number of correct guesses in the last t turns, and let B be the bottom of the deck, that is, B is an ordered set of size t. We will assume that the guesser plays perfectly in the first n minus t turns, and hence makes beta lan n correct guesses in the first part of the game. We will simulate the guesser, 
and see when the L correct guesses are made in the last T turns, and we will utilize them to describe B efficiently. To encode a random ordered set B, we consider a guesser with fixed randomness, so we don't need to encode the random bits, and we consider the guesser's memory state T steps from the end of the game. We then encode B by storing the guesser's M bit of memory, the allocations at which the guesser guessed correctly, this takes log T choose L bits, and the cards that were not guessed correctly in their respective order. So, to have things visualized, in order to encode an ordered set B, we simulate a game where the first n-t cards are not from B and they are arranged randomly. We take a snapshot of the guesser's memory state and we continue the game with cards ordered according to B. We write down the L turns at which the guesser guessed correctly, and we write explicitly the cards drawn at other turns. This is our encoding. We get the contradiction from counting the number of ordered sets B in two different ways. One is the number of possible ordered subsets of N of size T, and two is an upper bound on the number of descriptions made by our encoding scheme. And since the number of descriptions must be larger than the number of ordered sets, we get an inequality that describes the relation between the guesser's memory and the number of correct guesses in the last t turns. As a conclusion, we showed that there is a guesser that using m bits of memory managed to obtain half of square root of m correct guesses in expectation, and that any guesser with m bits of memory can get at most order of square root of m correct guesses in expectation when playing against a random shuffle dealer. We know that we can randomize this guesser by sampling a random permutation, and these results would hold also for a st any static dealer. This leads us to the most prominent case where the dealer may draw cards adaptively in an adversarial manner. The dealer may choose cards based on past guesses, and we assume that the dealer doesn't see the guesser's memory or randomness. We further assume that the dealer is not aware of the guesser's algorithm. Observe that in this case the two basic guessing techniques still works, both focusing on a subset of cards and remembering the last cards, meaning that we can still get LANM correct guesses in expectation. However, these techniques are no longer compatible, as there exists an adaptive dealer that checks which cards are guessed and put these cards at the bottom of the deck, diminishing the benefits of using the two methods. Another thing to consider is whether the dealer knows how much memory the guesser has. We will show that in both cases there exists an adaptive dealer against which any guesser managed to make at most roughly LAN M correct guesses. The general idea of our adversary is simply to refrain from drawing recently guessed cards, that is, moving these cards to the back and we shuffle the deck every once in a while, making all cards available for drawing again. The dealer begins the game with a properly shuffled deck and draw cards at random. At some point, the dealer begins to move cards to the deck and reshuffle at predetermined turns, which may be known to the guesser. Towards the end of the game, the dealer gets back to drawing cards at random. Observe that our dealer doesn't know anything about the guesser, and the only difference between the memory-aware and unaware dealers is the way they are parameterized. We refer to the span of turns between reshuffles during which the dealer moves cards to the back by the term epoch. Each epoch has three parameters, k, l, and u. K stands for the beginning of the epoch, and is the amount of turns left until the end of the game, right after the reshuffle. K 
Ki is the beginning of the i-th epoch. L stands for the length or duration of the epoch, and U, which bounds the number of cards we move to the back during an epoch. U is necessary so that cards will not become too predictable and so the dealer will have cards left to draw. The important property of this strategy is that during the move to the back epoch, a card may be a reasonable guess only once, because once it is guessed, it will not be drawn by the dealer, assuming no more than U cards were moved to the back. So the guesser has a single shot to guess a card she knows resides in the deck, as all other attempts to guess this card would be futile, and recall that guessing the same card over and over was exactly how our low memory guesser worked. So this strategy is efficient against our previous guesser. By the choice of our parameters, during any point in the epoch, the dealer has at least k-l-u cards to draw from. Therefore, the probability for a reasonable guess to be correct is at most 1 over k-l-u. As a result, and by linearity of expectation, the expected number of correct guesses during an epoch is upper bounded by r over k-l-u, where r is the expected number of reasonable guesses during that epoch. So all we have to do is upper bound the amount of reasonable guesses, and we will do it, as we did previously, via compression argument. We will use an encoding scheme for subsets of n of size k1, parameterized with some threshold alpha. When we want to encode a subset D, we will simulate a game between a guesser and our dealer, with fixed randomness corresponding to D being the bottom of the dealer's deck. Notice that we can always keep any K1 cards for the end. If the guesser makes less than alpha reasonable guesses during the i epoch, then we store D explicitly. But if the guesser makes more than alpha reasonable guesses, then our encoding consists of the guesser's memory state at turn n-k1, right before the dealer begins moving cards to the back, the first alpha turns in the i epoch during which the guesser guessed reasonably, we also store which of these reasonable guesses were correct, so that we can reproduce the course of the game during decode. And we also store all other cards drawn by the dealer. These are the cards for which the guesser did not provide sufficiently good information, so we store them explicitly. So overall, so overall we get an encoding of some size, which we compare to the number of possible elements in the domain, and we get a relation between m, the guesser's memory, and alpha, where alpha also describes how many bits we save, and thus we bound the probability for the guesser to make more than alpha reasonable guesses in every epoch. And by bounding that probability, we bound the expected number of reasonable guesses in an epoch. So now all we have to do is parameterize our dealers and epochs. For the memory size aware dealer, we configure each epoch to be of size m log n, and we get that no guesser with m bits of memory can make more than order of 1 correct guesses while the dealer moves cards to the back. As for our universal dealer, we set each epoch to be shorter by a factor of log n than the previous epoch. We also set the upper bound differently, so that when the guesser has insufficient memory, we call it the low memory error, the strategy works in favor of the dealer, but during the high memory error, the guesser's benefit is modest. As a conclusion, for every n, there exists an adaptive dealer, parameterized according to n, against which any guesser with n bits of memory makes at most 1m correct guesses in expectation and there exists an adaptive dealer, universal one, against which any guesser with n bits of mem memory makes at most roughly 1m correct guesses in expectation. 
The fact that these results holds, even if the guesser has lots of randomness and crypto and is computationally unbounded, while the dealer is very simple and computationally efficient, emphasizes that it is the adaptivity that plays the key role here. The first paper we found on card guessing dates back to 1924, where Ronald Fisher suggested and analyzed a scoring system for card guessing to measure one's claim of having psychic abilities, such as clairvoyance or telepathy. His paper can be found online in the Proceeding of the Society for Psychical Research. In 1981, the Aconis and Graham studied the game where there are multiple copies of each card and the guesser receives different kinds of feedback. And there are also more recent papers about other variants of the game. Here are some open problems. To amplify our guesser against the static dealer, we paid a log factor in order to get closer to LAN N, but Perhaps there is a finer way. It is very interesting to see what happens when there are multiple copies of each card. Our low memory techniques do not scale with the number of copies, and if there are too many copies, then a memoryless guesser can outperform our low memory guesser. What happens if the dealer and the guesser switch roles? and now the dealer is memory bounded. So she doesn't remember which cards are still available and she may not draw the same card twice. There exists a strategy for M bits dealer against which any guesser makes N over M correct guesses in expectation, but we do not know if this is optimal. It is also interesting to see if our techniques are useful for real-world gambling. It seems appropriate to finish with George Santayana's words. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And we add that this holds even if you use randomness and cryptography and even if you are computationally unbounded. Thank you.